this. Good. So once again, welcome to this session uh, on HCI Security Day One. Uh, so today it's going to be the first of five days where we're going to be covering a number of concepts. We'll be having five modules. Uh, this will gear you towards being ready for the HCI Security Certification Exam. Uh, it will also give you the requisite knowledge, associate level knowledge, for you to access. Uh, for you to know how to secure infrastructure, getting to understand the different security standards that are there. Uh, and also some, uh, it also prepare you to be ready for the lab sessions where you can do some practical hands-on on how to set up firewalls, uh, to actually configure uh, devices for secure access, such as two-factor authentication, and a number of other security mechanisms that uh, you realize that it's important for you. So let's just, this is going to be a rush through for this first part of the slide. Uh, just, to be, just to be precise on time, uh, we're going to be having the, the 10 or 15 minute break at around 4.30. So I'll be checking on my time and also ensure that you also do get the required break. So you're going to be having a, a break, then you're going to ensure that by the time we come back, we finish at around 6, 6, 15 there. So uh, don't worry, you haven't missed anything. I just showed members, for those who just joined in, I just showed uh, the participants on how to access the course on the Huawei Talent platform. So let's go on to this. Don't worry, I don't really, <clears throat> Do the forward, but in, at the end of this first part of this course, you'll just know how to define and know the characteristics of information security. You'll allow me to say infosec. Uh, that is how we usually just put it in <clears throat> in short form. <clears throat> uh, then you'll also get to know the characteristics and differences of uh, security models, and we'll know how to distinguish between the different security risks that are there. So uh, let's get on to this. Uh, most of the time we think about information as, uh, as things within computers, uh, as this kind of, when looking about it in terms of information system, management information system, anything that now makes sense. But information uh, comes from different, different places. And we realize that all of different organizations, many organizations, uh, they are in need of any kind of information that can help them to have a competitive advantage over their competitors, get to know their customers better so that they can retain them, so that they can make them buy more from them. So, uh, so you come to realize that information can be, uh, can be uh, created, it is also received and also maintained. Uh, and as evidence, and also you can see this is that and information by an organization or person in pursuance of legal obligations or intersection of business. So it can be for the purpose of pursuance of a certain legal obligation, uh, or it can also be with regards to transaction of business. And it can range from state secrets. Uh, there is emails. I just saw on Twitter the other day that there was an uh, a national intelligence service uh, official was arrested for trying to sell uh, top secret US information uh, in the US just the other week. So it means that anytime you have information in a kind of a system or even within the minds of people, uh, you need to find ways of ensuring that it doesn't get out uh, without the requisite authentication or authorizations. So, Again, things as, same things such as test questions. For example, if all of you would know all the questions that would be coming in the HCIA security exam, you might not be really authentic. Uh, some of you may not be enthousi enthusiastic to, to go through the whole, uh, the whole course. So, uh, so let's go on. So when you're looking about info information security as a precursor to the definition of information, you realize that, uh, it refers to the preservation of CIA, just sorry, CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. 
of data using some of the different security technologies that are there. And most uh, vendors, actually not all vendors, think about Huawei, Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, Cisco, all of them, they have technologies to secure you, not only their infrastructure, but, and also the information, they also have technologies for their customers to secure their the information. So you realize that it can it ranges. For example, the, there's the software part of information security, there's the hardware part, I think about uh, even physical firewalls. Uh, there's also the issue about uh, organizational management, thinking about the standards, how do you retain data, what is the information life cycle, at what point do you generate? At, uh, at what point do you transmit? At what point do you really exchange that data, which, which is supposed to exchange, or which one can be exchanged publicly without any need for encryption? Uh, which ones can be exchanged with the need of security and what level of security is needed? As well as how, in terms of processing, how do you process? For example, the other day we, ha we got now the GDPR, General Data uh, Protection Regulations from the European Union, uh, which sometimes you actually have to accept. You usually get now these days, uh, you have these pop-ups coming. Do you, allow, do you really click on allow all cookies or do you just go to settings and confirm which cookies are you really allowing so that you access that site? So those are some of the things. And also how, at what point in time should store information for how long? So that becomes essential. So, so when information assets are managed, uh, are damaged, a number of items become affected. For example, some of the things such as national security. For those who are very, very enthusiastic with following up with hacking and hacking movies, I believe you, you maybe have watched or even heard the story of Snowden and how it became a national security issue uh, with regards to the story around it. Uh, you also uh, watched mm -hmm. something like the great hack uh, let me take this call first with one of the other instructors. Sorry about that. Uh, I knew I was on mute. Sorry. Thank you. So uh, the other thing that really affects also, I, I was taking, telling you about Snowden. Snowden, for if you take time and also Google on what really happened, it was one of the top talents who was hired and also went rose into the ranks uh, for the information security agencies for the US, and later on decided that the amount of uh, surveillance that was going on against the US citizen by its own government uh, was, was too much for him to handle. And he decided, okay, uh, I'm going to turn against this organization, this department or this state agency that hired me and go and go tell it all. And actually now I think he, he was, uh, he was expatriated or actually he went through, he got some immunity in the Russia or something of that sort. So, so that is that is really the story around it, and it really affects. For example, there was a lot of issue with regards to the recently concluded elections with regards to hacking about information about portals about the, the Sekamago and all these kind of things. So it's all about people are trying to insinuate is there some tampering that has taken place with regards to the data or the information that was being transmitted from one end to another, from a polling station to a tallying center, and so on and so forth. 
So it's usually a national security issue. And then there's also the issue of system operation and also continuous development. If you are a developer, sometimes there's a number, the item of, uh, there's the item of, yeah, there's also that series called Scorpion, um, Kiribosi, yes, that's a good. So I would advise kindly go check on the Netflix the documentaries, go check also on this series. They really, there's also another series called Mr. Robot, if you haven't watched it, go check it. Uh, it's also a very good, uh, a very good series. So there's also the issue of personal privacy and property. Uh, for example, like that is what I told you that was causing issues. Like in uh, in the morning, I was watching a certain video uh, about a certain company called Humanites. I think I maybe I can put it on the chat. Maybe you can go check it out and see uh, what what they do. So they have actually created uh something like that uh they've actually created some badges which you can wear within work uh it knows where you are whether you are interacting with someone uh, at, uh how many times are you on your desk how close are you with your employees do you sit alone and it aggregates how many times are you talking with others how many times are you silent some of that sort so they are saying that at, at some point in time, uh, managers of different organizations want to know how productive uh, and how well they can structure their work environments so that, so that people can work better. But again, somebody will be wondering, uh, can this person be knowing some of the office gossip that I'm speaking through this badge that I'm having? So those are some of the things that come out in play with regards to personal privacy, with regards to also property. So I'll try to move a bit faster so that uh, we don't take too long in some slides. So again, if you have some questions, I'll put some of in the chat so you can put it there. I'll also try to see if you raise your hand, I'll also try to see that. So the aim of information security, uh, that I can see that last, that last sentence that is here, the aim of information security, let me just uh, do some, do another, okay. Uh, I think I can do, yeah, let me just, it's on the last line, uh, I wanted to do now some, let me see, I can get it from here. I think the laser pointer, yeah, this one helps, yeah, I hope you can now see. So the aim of information security is to help, is to protect data against uh, threats. That is what it really is all about. And also this can happen through some of the things such as technically and also effective management, but also realize that uh, you might have the best technologies, you have the next generation kind of firewalls, uh, but if you don't uh, take time on creating awareness, cybersecurity awareness amongst the workers, for example, like it was just, uh, just before I started this class, I received an email that a certain, a certain, uh, a certain thing that we registered as an organization uh, was expiring, and we are supposed to renew. Uh, I tried to click on the link. I first of all checked that it is not uh, having something to download or malware or something of that sort. But when I clicked on it, I already saw that it is requiring that I, that the organization pays five hundred dollars to, to actually get that that uh, re re renewal that was expiring in quotes. And I realized that, we, that when you did the initial registration, you are told that that identification of that resource is free and it's not going to be charged. So I knew that is, and since it was in my spam, I knew it was somebody who was just spamming and looking for money, something of that sort. So yes, as Evans has said, the human is the weakest link in enterprise security. Very, very true. So let's go on. And see. So, if you also have some stories to share with regards to some of the ways that you are hacked before, you can tell us. And you can raise your hand and tell us maybe what what happened, and and we can see what how did you try to mitigate and never get what again. So, as we move on, uh, so this is how Info, infosec has developed over the years. In the early 1900s, there was the issue of communication secrecy. So there was not much uh, tech around communication. There was no WhatsApp, there was no emails most of the time. 
uh, Imolos like for the preserve of the lead. Uh, so, so people just stored data physically. They also stored data in, if I was so to speak, Chinia mattress, if I would speak like that. So uh, then came, okay, that was the early 1900s, but you can see down here we have, that was the, I'm, I'm started from, from the latest. But if you look at for the earliest from the 1960s, uh, you can see that there's, there's the issue of, there's the issue of, information security stage. So we had the communication secrecy, then we had the information security stage, then we had the information assurance stage. So what happens is, uh, it, the, it's just that the days are kind of, that you should actually start with post 1960s, which is the communication secrecy stage. Then we have the, uh, the 1980s where we have the information security. Remember the internet came around the 19, is it when did the internet come into play? 1980 what? Who knows the idea? Who has an idea? Ah, Samuel, uh, self taught. So, uh, training materials. That is what I was saying. Uh, uh, you're, you're not going to share to emails, but you're going to see how you can access it. So, I can see Brian. He says you downloaded a WhatsApp, sent up, and it became tragic. Yes, those base.apks that you usually get there and somebody uh, has it, when you install it, it sends an SMS to everyone. Yeah, I can see 1983. So you can see it's the 1980s that we had. And I think it started out from a military kind of a project. Then uh, it, was, it scaled up. Then who knows when the World Wide Web came into play, where we now started having some pages which we can access. I know the internet was 1983. Uh, I can see there. Thank you, Marianne, Kayeli, Vincent. Yes. Yeah, and also there's something for those who take <laughs> who are very active. So uh, I'm on my on my own, on my own, not not under Huawei. So don't go tell Huawei that uh, the instructor promised us something. So I can see 1989. Yes. So that is when the World Wide Web uh, flourished or came into being. And when you realize, uh, who knows, who has an idea? It was this guy, who was the, what's the name of the guy who actually uh, conceived the World Wide Web? If you have an idea, you can post it in the chat. I'm also checking that. So, mm -hmm. so okay. So, so came the information assurance. And uh, yes, this is just Tim Berners-Lee, Tim Lee, yeah. So if you follow up that story, I always love following the stories of how things shape up so that I, pre I appreciate where they are really right now. And when you follow up the story from the World Wide Web up to now when we have TikTok influencers and everything, people making money all over uh, through con internet connectivity, and you think that you are like them, you post content, you get two likes. Anyway, that's a story for another day. So, uh, so we come to this point where you have information assurance uh, after information security. This is all about information security. Uh, now, when you get to the moment where we have after the internet development in the world wide web, there are new challenges of end threats that come into play. Now we come to find, we look at information-based security that replaces the tradition. The traditional security is where you lock things inside a, a room or you, ensure that that computer, nobody accesses it. Those are the kind of traditional security setup. But these days, as long as you're connected to the network, somebody doesn't have to come to that building to steal information from you. So there's this uh, nice story. I love this. I love this kind of story. So those, uh, China was actually requesting for, uh, they actually wanted to get oil equipment. And they had, uh, they posted this kind of picture. So there's some guys in Japan who actually got to know a lot of things. Just there was some intelligence experts who got to know a lot of things from this uh, picture. For example, if you are an intelligence expert, if I was supposed to speak, I've seen there's somebody who has declared themselves as white hat. 
has some things there. I've seen some people, uh, yeah, I've seen some people who have declared themselves some authority somewhere. So what can you, what can you, what can you pick from this photo and use it if I was telling you I want to buy some oil, uh, some oil equipment, and I've just posted this picture. What would you what would you make out so that you have a competitive advantage when you're bidding for equipment for, for me to buy equipment from you? And maybe you're working for a company that wants you are the intelligence expert, you are the hacker. So you, and it's not hacking about enumeration and doing the getting into a computer, it's just getting to know from this picture. Uh, can there are some leakage of information that can take place? What was an idea before it got obviously there's some content somewhere here. There's some content here which you're going to see. Uh, who has an idea? Anyone who has an idea uh, of what information was leaked or was it just a photo? Do you, or maybe if you think that there's nothing that uh, can see steganograph, Douglas, that, that's quite a lot. Uh, this obviously maybe, I know, I don't know whether I can say that's watching a lot of movies. <laughs> yes, I can see, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, the defender, the location is very cold. That's a good information to, to pick up. Uh, yeah, I can see the location was leaked. Yes, uh, Dennis. Yes, that is something that you could take. You can get the location uh, just by looking at that uh, photo uh, because of the climatic condition. Is there anything else? It looks like he's on a ship. Uh -huh. Close. That is something close. Yeah, you can see there's also there's something about the diameter of the oil field. I can see some people have already gone ahead and seen maybe their own content or somewhere. So, so you can see when you when you you could you, uh, the Chinese government was inviting bids for oil production equipment, and some Japanese intelligence experts were able to get some of the secrets that it is the oil field that was actually getting equipment for was a certain location because of the clothing. And also the diameter of the oil well was in part from the handle rack. The handle, you can see that part where the, this person is holding. So I don't know how many of you could have made point of <clears throat> made point of that. So so yeah, so so you can see that I think they must have these Japanese intelligence experts actually really helped in ensuring that uh, maybe they helped their the Japan government get to know how best to get the bits that would work out. So, uh, so Anthony Toko, you could have made on the point on the, on the clothes, that's nice, okay. So I've already mentioned about these communication secrecy. Uh, I already mentioned about that where, where we, okay, let me just, just get an idea, okay, the early 1900s. Okay, this is the early 1900s. Uh, people are just ensuring that this, some kind of uh, cipher-based security in form of information is what was happening. Most of the time it was stream cipher. <clears throat> this was early before, before we got to where we had the internet and the, the internet presented new challenges. Mm -hmm. So when we went to the 1990s from the communication secrecy, it's all about securing, ensuring that uh, if you're sending a, some communication, you actually change the A becomes a Z and you have a, a legend where you, you do that. <clears throat> then we had, uh, sorry about that. Then we had information security. Here we had these, and this is very important because it usually, it usually comes in the HCA security exam. That is the elements of confidentiality, integrity, availability, controllability, and unrepudiation. So if I just give you an idea, because you're going to still see it later on in the slides. Confidentiality is all about uh, what needs to be known and what needs not to be known. Integrity is, has it been changed or not? Availability is, is it there when somebody requires it? Controllability is, uh, can you be able to ensure that the people who, have, who should have access to a certain information have access and those who are not supposed uh, do not? Can you control that? Uh, then we have non repudiation where you ensure that if somebody is the one who sent a certain communication or, or actually created a certain leakage, they cannot deny uh, that they did that. So, uh, so these are some of the concepts that came into play 
as within that stage. When you go to information assurance, and Kindly, as we're also moving through this course, uh, don't look at it from the cybersecurity perspective. Don't be in a jump and saying, okay, let me not say cybersecurity perspective, technical cybersecurity perspective, because we are all cybersecurity, so cybersecurity would come. Uh, what I mean is that don't be so in a rush and wondering why are they going to, uh, to, uh, to Kali Linux or maybe to do some hacking or to do some why are you not going on ENSP on a network simulator and doing all these and it's at the start? Uh, it's very important to know that most of the time, as you've already said, the human is the weakest link. So uh, it's very important to know what can you do to support the business. For example, uh, the management of your organization will not care whether you used Kali Linux or Parrot to secure the, 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 uh, the information. They will not really be or maybe to set up or maybe to do analysis or to do some enumeration or to do some pen testing. They really not care about that, but they want to understand in layman language, what have you done to set up? So somebody asking, what is the difference between controllability and confidentiality? So as I've said, we are still going to go to those parts. We are going to look at it a bit deeper, but in looking about controllability is think of yourself as an administrator. Uh, as an administrator, uh, there is something that maybe uh, finance, maybe as an administrator of an information security management system, uh, finance are supposed to have access to the payroll and or maybe the HR uh, information. This person is in this grade and earning this amount of money so that they are able to pay that person the money. They are, able, they are supposed to be able to know something of that sort. But maybe if you are uh, the same same as an administrator, you also have maybe people from, let's say, uh, testers or maybe quality assurance. The same people are not supposed to have access to the payroll to know that how much everyone is earning uh, because that is not going to help with their work in quality assurance. So controllability is just to ensure that uh, the information uh, that is supposed to be uh, availed to some people to some certain set of people is available and controlled to that to that space and not maybe in another space. So, but confidentiality is all about, for example, you how do you how do you rate, how do you classify your information? Is it maybe public? Is it uh, uh, secret, top secret? Uh, something of that sort. So you can think of that. For example, there's information that can be top secret because when it is out, it can really affect the business. For example, like, you know, for example, there's like some trade secrets, for example, KFC and their recipe, that is kind of top secret to them because the moment it's out there, any, any other competitor can make the same kind of uh, chicken and they not have that competitive advantage, something of that sort. So, so it's all about the user permissions and roles. Uh, yes, it's all about user permissions, some of the roles, but confidentiality is all about, uh, for example, you can think about encryption, ensuring, or maybe uh, thinking about, um, about cryptographic methods, trying to ensure that Whatever should be secret is secret. Uh, whatever should not be known is not known. Yeah, so we still get a hang of these things as we move on. So when you talk about business-oriented information and security assurance, uh, different service traffic. So there's the business, there's the security system, then there's management. So, uh, so what, what, what do you mean about assurance? So you're talking about you are, telling you that in terms of what you're going to offer, uh, for example, like right now, the other, the, the other day, WhatsApp, I had to ensure that anytime you start a message, says that this message is, uh, and is encrypted using end-to-end -to -end encryption, something of that sort, usually get that message. Because there's a lot of issues with regards people saying that uh, I'm sending a message to a certain person, but since however it's going through from the network, from one WhatsApp, to another WhatsApp uh, application, somebody can get in the middle and get to know what we're really talking about. 
so so that was part of their assurance in terms of uh, in terms of setting up they say that ensure they've ensured that this end-to-end -end encryption of their messages so uh, when you're looking at at the business level you're looking at some of this risk that comes with uh, and protection methods for example uh, when you're looking at the security system you're looking at some of the management how do you really have this the technologies that are there are you doing some proactive defense uh ensuring that there's not uh passive just pa some passive protection you know passive protection is you just set up maybe some passwords uh and people even are maybe sharing those passwords through sticky notes so some that's just some passive protection but you're having a do you have some proactive defense have you set up some multi-factor have you set up such that people can't log in outside the the net the, the enterprise network to some of the core systems of that sort then when you're looking at management uh okay i'll do that at the end uh make sure anthony I look i'll make sure i do that then you're looking at management is only remind me if i forget talent development system uh, so management is usually concerned with about the about the skill set of their workers I was watching a certain video on how technology is changing and how like by 2025, 85 million jobs will have been lost because of people being replaced by technology uh, in some cases. But again, I also saw that it's saying that uh, 97 million jobs will have been created or maybe uh, workers will have been able to reskill to change their way, they adapt to the new ways of technology of working. So it's it's quite tricky. It's quite it's quite tricky with regards to management. And any company that takes a back seat with regards to talent development, with regards to cybersecurity, not having a budget for it, uh, they're usually in for a road shock. Because as you're going to see in some of the cases, you saw things such as the Wanna Cry, uh, Solar Winds disaster. Facebook has faced a number of suits with regards to information security. All these are sometimes they stem from a leniency or a complacency from the management perspective. That is why they're usually the ones who are called to be answerable. So uh, yeah, 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 Evans. A robot replaces you, you learn how to repair the robot and you are back to the office like you never left. Yeah, that's that's a good way to look at it. You can see at Chico, you're saying what? Uh, if WhatsApp is really, really end to end encrypted, how are the modes like GB WhatsApp, WhatsApp Plus access to the same messages with extra features? So, obviously, when you talk about modding, uh, they actually mod with the base, they start with the base app itself. So, it's not really, uh, it's not really that they are actually having, uh, they are having their own infrastructure or maybe they're accessing the, the WhatsApp infrastructure and the messages, then they're actually put, uh, redirecting it through their apps. But it's just, it's just like when you're having a certain app, then you decide, okay, or maybe you're having a car and you decide you're going to put some mods on it, you're going to put turbo, you're going to put this kind of exhaust that ensures that everyone knows that you are there. Uh, you put some lights, some, some like what, blinders or something of that sort. The car is still the same one, it's just that you've added more features. So, so that is how you can look at it. So yeah, Spotify, it's also being cloned. So these are, yes, there's some cloning, then there's also some modding. There's a difference between cloning and app. Even, even like you can even clone your WhatsApp and have, it, have two accounts on the same phone. You can clone Facebook and have, but the cloning ensures that you just have the, a similar app, similar features but modding is adding more features to it. Yeah, so I, I think I talked about this, this the Wanna Cry, it's a very, it's a very famous uh, kind, of, kind of ransomware that was perpetrated in 2017 uh, through a through uh, place called Eternal, Eternal, Eternal Blue. Some of the different, even, even most of the, uh, Places that were affected was even universities. People had their assignments locked out, their their papers, and maybe their systems 
because you know that is where most people actually are most vulnerable. There's a lot, there's not a lot of cybersecurity awareness taking place sometimes in education uh, and also in campuses most of the time. Also, government was affected. You can see this guy, I think he's a, he's a police officer. Uh, they are, they are, they can see that they are already on that screen. They have been told that all their all their information has been locked. I think this is a lab. You can see in a lab all the these those wanna cry screens. I think this was also in a in an airport somewhere. You can see there's also that wanna cry screen. Also, I think in energy, I think this is also this looks like an ATM. It was crazy. It was crazy. Wanna cry. Uh, it costs a lot of loss. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kevin, I, I've seen that Zoom, Zoom, and Zoom, Zoom. It's the, the same kind of pronunciation. So, Ocean Lotters, uh, yeah, yeah, the guy is crying. It's crazy. Can imagine if it was you? I can imagine if the data, that is why I decided to invest in some kind of offsite backup because. Can imagine if you lose all your data. So there's, a, there's another issue of APT. APT stands for Advanced Persistent Threat. And you can see this, this guy, I don't know whether you are, I love some, the, that book called The Art of War by Sam So it says, uh, and also the quotes that come out of it. In, for example, like you can see it says, yeah, he will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all, uh, whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. So it means that, uh, from the from the cadet to the major general, if you are having the same kind of spirit with regards to how you want to do some attack, you'll win. You'll obviously win. So, uh, so what happened with APT? For example, like the Ocean Lotus Group uh, has been carrying out what we call targeted penetrations. For example, these in terms of some of the important sectors in China, such as government, the research institutes the maritime institutions and constructions, and also the enterprises. And this has been happening from that April 2012. And the, the intent around it was con getting it from confidential information, uh, trying to intercept some of the intelligence that were being sent out using the attacked computers and uh, to ensure that the computers can automatically send those kind of related intelligence. And that is why it's called advanced. And it is also persistent, it means that it continues to do it in a way that it can go on and detect it for a very long time. So, so they usually stand with spear phishing, spot phishing. Phishing is where, you, for example, you can use, for example, I, I don't know whether you know, there's a difference between, let me see whether I can annotate this. Do you know there's a difference between this? Okay, sorry. Uh, where's my mouse? Yeah. Okay. There's a difference between, let me open this. Okay, yeah, see, I can do it. There's a difference between this A, and then there's a difference between this, usually this A. I don't know who writes that A. Do you usually write it? Okay. This looks like a nine. Let me just do it as if I'm a good boy, like that. There's a difference between this A and this A, right? You know that, right? I hope you know that. In terms of computing and also in terms of looks, there's a difference. So maybe you can say yes, so that I confirm that you're, you're with me on this. So there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, it depends on where you went to school. Maybe you were kindergarten, those who went to kindergarten, uh, or kindergarten again. Is it this one? This looks like the kindergarten one. This one looks like the one for free education. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, Anthony, there's a difference. So, for example, somebody can, the reason why I'm telling you that, let me see whether I can do a blank. I don't know whether I can do a blank. Yeah, good. I can do a blank there. So, uh, so, Let's say somebody writes for you Facebook.com and another one writes for you. A, okay, well, how was the other one? The other one was like that recently. Facebook.com. 
like that. We put the dot a bit better. So would you be able to know that this one is a fake, maybe, and this one is the true one? Will you be able to know? Will you be able to know the difference? Uh, Nicholas, you're saying there's no, but in computing, there's a difference. Uh, I don't know where I can be able to show you the difference. Uh, okay, let me see whether I can show you this. Uh -huh. Let me just see whether I can see. Uh, let me take you to somewhere so that you know this. You need to learn this. You know you're going to become cybersecurity expert. So you need to know this. So. Let me see that. Okay, let me see that. So you can see, the, this is called double story lowercase, minus, minus, minus school, and this one. So, um, this is an historical aspect of the dollar entity. But let me see whether I can get where I can find that A and type it. So let's get this. I'm trying to let, look at a few things better so that you can see the difference and how you can respond. It's loading on this other side. So let's say we type ww dot c. Facebook.com and I scan. So you can see it says it's false, it means it's fine. So because you already know that how that it looks like. Okay, I already reached my daily. I'll do another fishing checker like DMAC. Then I will try to look for the other thing. Okay, I can see. The one that we have types of A, then I can the easier way to just show is like using the ASCII. So the A has a different ASCII. Then ASCII stands for American characters, which is interesting. It's the code that the computer understands for every character, the keyboard. For example, there's for example, the lower case A. Uh, you can see you see a difference. So when you type the other Facebook with the other kind of uh, the other kind of A, you can be able to easily pull someone. It might be also a few things there. So there are also other letters, there are also other kind of annotations. You can even have an A with a, for example, for example, this let me show you. For example, you can see there's also uh, an A that can have a, a usually on a semi or a copy or a paper, usually see it. Can I select this? Fake. Then that, I think that's a fake stuff, but I can be able to look for it. So you can see there's this A, you can see there's a timed A, and this is the first one. Yeah. So, I, uh, so that one is the single story on a Gorofa mod. F. You can see that. 
facebook.com. Do you see what has happened? It has taken me to a phishing URL. I think it was already Facebook. It was already blocked. But it takes me somewhere else, right? It is not the same as you can see there's a difference between this facebook.com and these and these facebook.com you see there's a difference between the two yeah you can see that is that is something i hope you've learned something i think you've learned something uh yeah okay sorry sorry yeah so <laughs> I say our S is already protecting us by not giving us the various A options. Yes, but you know, uh, you're not going to be typing. Most of the time, you might click a URL, a phishing URL, and uh, you, may, you may be wondering what is the issue. So, yeah, so if you have a you cannot get it really on the Facebook desk, but somebody might have already set it up so that you can go and register that domain and it takes you to a place that looks like a Facebook page and you provide your credentials. Then you come looking for us saying, uh, uh, I clicked on this, I put my password, my email has been changed and all that has been changed. Anyway, uh, Kennedy, uh, I don't know where you want to come from. Maybe you want us to go back to the slides, but you can go on. <laughs> okay, uh, I hope you've learned something there. Yeah, so let me go back to this. So it's very important to know some of the things. Fishing URLs are very key. And the good thing is these days is with, with the adoption of things such as machine learning, uh, you can easily detect. And also the way information is being put out there, there are a lot of phishing URL checkers. So always there's also, I think there's usually a site. I don't know whether somebody knows. You can put a link there so that it opens for you before you even click it. Uh, if you have an idea, uh, forgotten its name, you can also post it. Uh, so yeah, I see I have like five minutes to a break, but it's, yeah, it's URL scan.io. Yes, thank you, Rose. There's also that one. Make sure you also take note of that. You use, make sure you don't just click. Uh, if I was to put it as Kifogodari or something of that sort. Uh, Anthony, yes, you used to fish Facebook. Najo Lipata credentials, a lot of credentials uh, for weird people uh, seeing what they usually post there. But I think uh, Facebook has tried to tighten their security from back then, I think so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you can go on with this and see how it goes. So we're looking at, uh, oh, you want, BMG, you want me to go to the previous slide? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I went to these other slides, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So we have causes of attacks, for example, and also I hope you're taking notes. You're told to come and take some notes. Don't wait for me to tell you where to take notes or not. Uh, if you're asking for materials, materials are on the Huawei talent platform. Uh, obviously, I'll share the recording. I'll share the recording. Uh, I'll make sure I upload it somewhere so that it is easy. I cannot, I cannot send it out as an MP4 so that you access it and you can follow it this up. So yeah, we direct course, indirect course. So we have in, there are some direct courses of attacks and some indirect courses of attacks. Don't talk about direct courses. Sorry, sorry, I clicked again. I'm trying to move to this other screen. Yeah, just move this to the side. <clears throat> so we're talking about some direct courses you already know there, the, the DDoS. Uh, I think it was Dennis who was telling about the DDoS you're going to look at. There's a backdoor, there's the Trojan, there's the vulnerabilities uh, in, a, in, a, in a software or in an operating system, there's the virus. Those are some of the direct courses of an attack of such of the like, for example, those such attacks such as the the APTs, advanced persistent threats, as well as the ransomware such as WannaCry. Then we have the indirect causes, which are, for example, the complexity of the system. For example, if you've been attending some cybersecurity trainings or some webinars, uh, for example, I think the other day. Uh, those are cloud security webinar on Saturday or something of that sort. Uh, 
you will have realized that there is a lot of change with regards to how development of software is being done. There are issues as such, there are different uh, deviations or, or I can say dialects of how we looked at things, these DevSecOps, these shift left, these, uh, uh, these things such as infrastructure as code. So many things that are coming into play just to ensure that you're trying to to, to move and adapt with the different threats that are there with systems. People are moving to the cloud, meaning that the, that the, that the, that the net or some of the surface of threat becomes wider than when it was within an on-premise. So, so those are the things coming in play. So when you're maybe creating, for example, you're talking about information system complexity, you have a very complex process. Uh, you have put security to take a back seat so you are so focused on the design. There's a lot of human errors with regards to complexity, which re relates to vulnerabilities. For example, I think there was uh, that, for example, the WannaCry took advantage of port 445 in Windows, uh, which was, I think, an open port. And just like that, just one small human error, if I was so, so to speak, in terms of development causes uh, losses in terms of billions of dollars, which is crazy. So also in terms of design, some of you maybe you're going to be working with architects, uh, solutions architects uh, as cybersecurity experts. So it means that you need to be able to advise and also be having, even in any role right now, any role in IT requires somebody to have some cybersecurity knowledge. That is why uh, that is why you are doing, you have made the best decision to, to do this kind of a boot camp and, and check on what is here. So uh, what can I tell you about this is try to ensure as if you're going, if you're in a, yes, you're doing this cybersecurity boot camp, but you are more of a developer, make sure you are actually creating not a complex system, uh, too complex, that even security cannot be enforced. But uh, a system that has a, comp uh, a simple process and a simple structure that can be easily secured rather than a complex structure and a complex system and a complex application that makes it very difficult to secure because the information system is so complex. So the other thing is human and environmental factors, which is we already talked about this from the start of the lecture. Uh, we've talked about things such as uh, writing your passwords on sticky notes, sending them out on an email. Uh, I don't know how many of you do this, but I still do. I don't know how best to do it. You send your, you send cPanel credentials, uh, uh, creating a website. You send WordPress administrative credentials through an email. Uh, some of that sort, you, you, these usually these, then you wonder how will I, will I set up a text file or I encrypt it, how will I encrypt it? Then I put a, I create a public and a private key just to send somebody maybe their WordPress or maybe their, their uh, flow or maybe their weak credentials or something like that. So if you're developing a site that is, how will you be able to actually secure? So uh, one thing you need to remember is that they are always there. These indirect causes will always be there. And they are the ones that are going to uh, assist the direct causes. For example, it is a human factor that will result into an, uh, to a virus. CG, if you're like me, but uh, I've never, it's rare to go to any campus and hear that they have a virus-free computer lab. If it is there, you can tell me it's your university and you tell me where it is, it's, that must be amazing. I don't know how it, it works, but computer labs and viruses, I don't know why, anyway. Uh, but the hosting providers are the ones who share the details to our emails. Maybe they do it securely. I don't know. I don't know even uh, they do it, but I think they usually expect that you're going to change them. Uh, uh, yes, Dennis, stand on a pattern. Yes, TUK, technical, you're saying you're good. 
unless it was once in a million. <laughs> G quarters like 18, uh, 1 billion, or is it 1 billion? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I don't know why. And uh, yes, Mr. Robot, MIT. Okay, I'm talking about Kenyan campuses. Let me not, let me just, let me not go global on it. Uh, but it's something, and I don't know whether the administrators there, they gave up because, because already know they usually, there's usually some antivirus that is usually important. I don't know whether it's updated. Uh, SU doesn't. SU is which on Strathmore. Uh, any, let me not mention names. Any, so we are in a class and I don't want to be to be in hot soup or anything. But if you are there and you are working towards the cyber security, becoming a cyber security expert, maybe you can help. Maybe you can help uh, your campus deal with that issue. I don't know why it has been a ever persistent issue. And it is those antiviruses zenye zilishughulikia yango ya kitambo sana. Uh, for example, the shortcut virus and all those kind of things. Anyway, uh, so what is the significance of building information security? Uh, okay, I see Evans is saying uh, public computers are hard to put up military grade. The users will run away. Uh, but what about, it's a simple, put an antivirus, update it, run it every time. If it eats the files, it's fine, but ensures at least the computer is clean. Oh yeah, we were supposed to go for a break, um, five minutes. So let me just finish this module. Let me see how much slides I have. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm almost done. Let's finish up on this. Then maybe you can go at, at 45, then you come back at five, please. I hope that's fine with you. Kindly allow me to do that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rose, Lynette, Dennis. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Antivirus. Me, I can't recommend. People say Kaspersky is uh, he hogs the computer's resources. People say they like a fast. I don't know which works best. Uh, but I'll tell you which ones I, I use. I'll tell you which one. I usually use Kaspersky. Maybe because I I have sixteen GB of RAM, so I don't really feel the issue of Kaspersky being heavy on the computer. Uh, is also the Windows Defender, yes. So you can you can suggest some of the best antiviruses there. Yeah, I don't know. I, personally, I, I pay for my Kaspersky. I, I see it's sometimes the amount you pay is not com worth comparing to, to to that and don't try to, to install a, 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 a cracked antivirus. Who does that? Like how can an antivirus be really cracked, surely? Anyways, uh, so where was the increasing com uh, importance uh, with regards to, that is importance, that is, uh, there's always an increasing importance for information security. These days, uh, even organizations have a cyber security uh, department, so, or a fraud, department to just deal with those issues. Uh, there are even consulting firms. Uh, there are a number of them out there. You can even work for them. You can see it is already a career field. There's a lot of importance on it. Then there's also, it's also applicable to so many fields, be it in e-commerce, uh, medicine. You had a lot of it regards to COVID-19 pandemic and also some pandemic related cyber attacks. Uh, there's also intelligent transport system. Everything is going smart. Uh, right now, even Kenya has what? <clears throat> Huduma or what? You can imagine if you're able to just uh, gain access and get all that information from within the, the e-citizen or what is it called? Uh, so government is also trying to go digital. Uh, there's also military. They have always been working on that. There's what you call in Kenya the NC4. The number, for example, in China, they have this command control communication computers and intelligence system, C4I. So it's so applicable to so many fields. Yeah, so there we are with that. Let me try to move faster. So some of the risks, risks are anything that, uh, for example, if you are defining a risk is an opportunity or an occurrence that can have a negative impact. If I was to give it in layman, like it will have, uh, <clears throat> it will have a negative impact. So if you're looking at what we're talking about, risk, 
is a measure or the extent to which an entity is threatened by a potential circumstance or event. For example, if you if I leave my computer and it's on it's a it's in the library and I just went to maybe relieve myself and I've left it without locking the screen, that is that is an event that has a potential uh, extent to which I'm threatened with regards to my information security. So there are physical risks that, for example, like that one, there are some network risks, there are some system risks, information, application, some management, as well as other risks. I talk about physical, uh, I talk about some of the theft of the devices. Uh, I remember when uh, I, I ever worked in a cyber so many years ago. Uh, then, uh, then I think we usually, it was a very booming cyber and we had some people didn't like that. And they thought, okay, let's go and get some people to, to, steal, to steal those computers. So I don't know whether they didn't do some awareness for those who, who are coming to steal. Uh, they came and only stole the screens and they left the CPUs. So, so I was wondering, the, the, the moment I came in and saw that the door has been broken into, I was wondering, I'm so dead, uh, I'm going to lose my job. But when I saw that the persons left all the CPUs, I was wondering, should I call my boss and or should I start by laughing first, uh, so that <clears throat> so that my boss doesn't think that I'm taking his business as a joke. But it was crazy. It was just crazy. And uh, from there on, you can see at least they left the information. They, yeah, they stole only the monitors. So at least I told him I can can look for him some monitors that are around three thousand. And yeah, we get a good padlock and stuff like that. So, so there are some physical risks that come into play. I've watched a number of movies. People just go there and plug in some some flash disks. So, so some of those things that come into play. Uh, do you disable the ports? So so on and so that. Then also radiation, electromagnetic radiation can cause issues with the magnetic disk. Uh, power failure. Yeah, all these come into play. Yeah, I uh, can see you see small. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there's also that. Yeah, yeah, they just saw the monitor. <clears throat> and monitors were, were very cheap. And I think they have even become cheaper. Uh, these days, you can even get a monitor for less than 5,000 shillings. So, yeah, so we bought new computers, uh, do some burglar proofing, and life went on. And I think that uh, enemy really wondered uh, what the hell is these people doing. Anyway, uh, so there's some of the information risks. For example, how do you protect data in transit or at rest? That are some of the things that come with storage and security. Uh, transmission, it's uh, I've already talked to you about transit and also access. Uh, so this comes from uh, things such as IM, identity, uh, and access management. So. How do you ensure that the risks that come in to play with regards to information are dealt with? So there's this good diagram, let me just jump onto it. <clears throat> Shows how information transmission <clears throat> uh, security is important. For example, let's think about like, let's say your, your favorite bank or SACO. Let me just say uh, Huawei SACO to be safe. And there are uh, actually having, for example, these, <clears throat> these, are, they are, these are router. So they are transmitting information via the internet through the router and going to the headquarters. So can you imagine, because obviously every SACO must have an headquarter which is not within the same office as the branch. So what happens is an attacker can, can take advantage and have some information that has leaked, get onto the, their own device, uh, then they tamper that information and send it back to the quarters. Think of it like if somebody can send to the branch, send from the branch, for example, you're the hacker and you're having the, you're having what? You're having an account in a branch and the account is sending to the headquarters that you took a loan of 1 million, but you send it to the headquarters and you say you took a loan of 10,000. And then you, and then that every time it does that, there's an issue and maybe you are taking more and by the time they're following it up with regards to the money itself, uh, you've, you've actually messed up the whole circle and they're in, 
in deep trouble. Anyway, yeah, 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 this is what we call man in the middle. We had it somewhere uh, within the picky picky ponky. So, so yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, that is some of them. What do we do with regards to information access uh, security? So what happens in this is an, an, an unauthorized user will actually uh, remotely access the internet resources. Uh, and you can see through an illegal login, for example, they maybe gotten some credentials. They are authenticated because uh, once they are getting the, the, the login, they're able to access the internet because the authentication server I just authenticate them on the with regards to just the correct username and the password, which is quite crazy when you come to think of it. Then when you talk about the system, how do you configure the database? Are you the one who still use root with no password in, in maybe SQL uh, or use admin admin uh, as the username and the password? Uh, what are the security of the services that are running on the system? <clears throat> Can they be accessed? Can they be used to access other services? Into operating processes, yeah. So this break time, it's break time. <clears throat> I think I'll jump off application risk, you look at it. There's also the network risk. Some of the management risks are also there with regards to those aspects. Policy, I'll follow it up with you with that. And then also remember that 70% of the loss in terms of information is usually caused by intentional leakage by insider threats. This is crazy. Weak security awareness, malicious data theft, non standard system operations, and also lose authorization rules. So, always remember technologies can take 30%, but management is already 70%. So, what are the current developments? We need to introduce new strategies, strengthen the legislation. You have the Data Protection Act, the Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes Act, enter, enter the era of standardized systemized management, use ISMS. We are going to look at that in the next session. So we get to the quiz, then we go to break. Uh, so information security incidents frequently occur because of uh, attack, because of security attack methods such as vulnerabilities, viruses, and backdoor pro uh, programs. True or false, you can put it in the chat. Maybe put A or B, <clears throat> we see which, uh, which is the right answer. You can see there are some people saying a a a a a a a a a true 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 true. I can see a lot of truths. You can see some people are not listening in the class. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I'll go to the previous slide after the break. Why are you saying a? Okay, I say information security. Read the question first. Don't just jump onto it. Information security incidents frequently occur because of security attack methods. Is that the case? Is that what we've been saying? Vulnerabilities, viruses, backdoors. Those are the direct causes. So the answer is B. And you can go for a break because I've already taken two minutes of your break. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> the answer is B. It is false. It is false. And if you don't know why, it's because it's the, it's the, the incidents occur mostly because of the humans, not the attack methods. Uh, for example, like as you're going to become a white attacker, you realize that most there's a lot of work that has been done to secure technologies by default. So you'll require some social engineering or something of that sort to take advantage before you come and put your payload. So that is that we've done that with the basic concepts and also the development history. So you can take a break and then we come back at five on the dot. So for those of somebody who's saying, I go back to the previous slide, there it is. Uh, you, the break has already started. So uh, don't stick around if you want to go in and maybe relieve yourself and maybe go take some cup of water as I also go take mine. I'm also going to take my net so that you come back. So we'll come back at exactly five. So I don't know whether how I'll be able to do it. Uh, let me just do this. OK. 
when I say, I'll do this. Then I'll do So I think that will suffice. So for those who are asking for me to share the slides, I'll show you how to access the content or the PDF from the Huawei Talent platform uh, after the break. Good, good, I can see. Thank you, Mukiri Bosi. That's a name and a half. Anthony Tuku, BMG, Efi, Moli, John, QB, Philip, <clears throat> User, Walia, Dennis, Mary, Elvis. Good, so beat, Mwangi, Daniel. Good. Jaylene, <clears throat> thanks, Anthony. So there's a question at the <clears throat> at the last certificate courses paid. I'm not getting you. Last certificate courses. Or do you mean the certification exam? Certification exam, I think you're going to get a voucher for it. So uh, but that will depend if you fulfill those requirements to get the voucher. Okay. Uh -huh. so let me put this chart to the side so that I can to see, let me open the participants so that this time you're going to be a bit more also interactive. Uh, so I'll, I'll be checking on the raised hands. So remember to raise your hand, you cannot automatically unmute yourself. So uh, then I'll be able to. So I wanted to show you how you access this. I know, <clears throat> I hope you can see my screen. You can see I can download this PDF of the k 2 MB. I can download this lab guide of 4.28. Uh, there are a number of things here. I don't know that these are available for you. I think this might be available to instructors. But yeah, you must be able to access this to I'm sure of it. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody who will have logged in will tell me. So let me just show you. For example, if you are on this screen, let me first of all tell you. Okay, let me just, let's say you are on the Huawei talent platform there. Let me take this call and just answer something. Sorry. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so you're on this platform, which is very easy to get to. Just search HCIA security. Uh, sorry, I forgot the S. So when you're there, 
uh, it will load obviously a bit of time but if you're having very fast internet it will load uh, faster than that then you obviously choose the second one i think this one that has 7249 views takes you to a translator, you can just take it to English if it's asking you that. So once you're here, uh, personally, I would say that I've already taken, but you may be, may be showing launch course, to show launch course. Uh, once you're there, you'll be able to see the content with, together with somebody who can run you through some of the concepts in video format here for you to just listen. Uh, but you don't need to go through this if you are also in the live session and you're going to be going through all of them. Then uh, there's this bottom part, usually called a footer for those who are developers, I think. So there's this bottom part. And you can see this about us, resources, quick links, and contact us. So you, under resources is this part called documentation center. There's also this part called ICT Academy download zone. Uh, whichever it is, I think it's still fine whether you choose documentation center or ICT Academy download zone, but I, I'll choose a documentation center. When you go to documentation center, uh you will you can you can choose you can filter which is very important so i'll filter under security and then i'll filter basically for hcia right now so i already get these all these documentation i can download so you'll click for example this training material just click on it Think it's already downloading or what? Okay. I don't know if it's because I haven't accepted their cookies. Yeah, so you'll try to download and tell me whether it works. Uh, if it works for you, all is good and tell me and see whether you can, because <clears throat> I've already downloaded. Once you download, this is how it looks like. Let me just see what? Oh, it's not downloading. The download doesn't work. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see what happens. So the other thing that I can do, I will actually, if it is not downloading on the end, on your end, I can, uh, let me see whether I can switch on this side. I can share a link. It will begin downloads for every click you made. Okay, I clicked several times. I don't know whether it goes directly because I always know there's a place where you can find first. Let me see whether I can open in a new tab. Copy image address. <laughs> Let's try to see whether it's still a link. Mm -hmm. Anyone has been able? Oh, so you can see you have no permission to access the materials. Uh, click here to obtain download permission application guide. Okay, so what, what we do, uh, let me just get you, because I have this PDF to make life much simpler. Uh -huh. Let me put it on a Google Drive. I think I already have it on my Google Drive and I'll share with you the link. 
think would that be fair enough? And uh, WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp might be tricky. CIS security training material. Let me just get you the link and I also share it with you. I'll also share. Yeah, let me share it with you here. Yeah. Just get your Google Drive link. It's going to make our life much, much easier. But you can also access materials from that from the platform itself. Yeah. So let me share the link. And please don't try to use the link to, to try to hack my account or something. And I'm dealing with uh, self-proclaimed hackers. <clears throat> so don't worry about the 788 pages. <laughs> uh, uh, it's all about learning. It's all about not. It's not about. It's, it's about getting the skills. Even myself, I was kind of intimidated the first time. Yeah, oh, so it downloads if you're patient, okay. So there's also the Google Drive link. You can download. Uh -huh, yeah, so there we are, <laughs> Fatma, yes, self-proclaimed. You know, sometimes you might proclaim yourself. Even Jesus had to proclaim himself as God for people to understand him. So uh, for those who are in that kind of religion. Anyways, uh, I think I hope the link is working for those who have tried it out on the Google Drive. It's a copy of that. Um, let's go on. We are a bit behind. I think I was so carried away with running. So we have done it. I think we have done. We need to move a bit faster. Yet I have only an hour. So let me go to the next module. Uh, Yes, Daniel, yes, Taki Social, Taki Social Engineering, Musinianzie, Musinianzie, Tafadali. Oh, so the somebody was saying I go back to the previous slide on application. It would be unfair for me to not do that. Uh, so let me just go there and tell you something on application. On application risks, we have network viruses that can take place. Uh, some risk that can come is when the operating system has some vulnerabilities. For example, if you try to use Windows XP right now, you'll face a lot of wrath from people over the internet because they already know some of the vulnerabilities that are there. We have a web service security. For example, let's say you are using a certain service like a uh, uh like what like let's say google docs i'm not saying that it has a security vulnerability but it's a web service then you might face some security issues uh some ftp service think of maybe megafire uh you're using dropbox uh and maybe somebody gets access to your credentials and you're able to see all the weird or the good things that you put there Okay, then DNS, people can spoof the DNS and maybe give you the wrong links. You type on this, they take you to the wrong place. Uh, then there's also business application software, uh, things such as ERPs, uh, such as uh, accounting softwares, all these have some risk with it. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Or the one who was asking. So where well, we are supposed to open the next module. I think I opened it and I forgot. Let me see which one it was. Formation security standards. Yes, this is amazing. We're not going to take too much time there. I think five or 10 minutes on it. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So this is what you call the information security standards and specifications. And standards are very, 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 very important. For example, like it is a standard that is ensuring that you are uh, connecting with one another. It is a standard 
that is also allowing things such as uh, like HTTP, HTTPS, uh, such as FTP, all those protocols come from certain agreed standards. So same case, information security, there are some standards and specifications that govern information security, not only in a local setup, for example, like in a certain country, like Kenya or China, uh, but also globally. Uh, and uh, you're going to see that. So some of the things you'll be able to know some of the common information security standards, you get to know some of the significances of it. And uh, the main points, which is quite important, sometimes it appears in the HCIA security exam. So it's important to take note and get to understand which are the standards that are there and what do they really talk about. So don't worry if I move a bit faster, this is the recording. So you'll be able to pause or run the recording at 0 0.5 speed. So you'll allow me to move faster. Uh, yes, yes, Elmas, you are going to supposed to complete it in a week. Yeah, I think there's also another phase of the challenge of your cybersecurity bootcamp where you're going to be doing more of labs in a competition. But that will, I think was communicated in your opening ceremony last week. Yeah, so yes, you missed it. I'll check it out without thinking. So let's look at some of the standards. So why why should we have them? They why why are they important? Because First of all, they are jointly formulated. For example, let's say Huawei as a network uh, infrastructure provider sits down with Google as a, as a web or a cloud provider or Microsoft uh, Azure or something. Uh, they also sit with maybe people like IEEE, IETF, uh, Internet Society, and then they agree on some documents that are going to guide for the best security. So to think of it like standards. So, so this, for example, somebody may ask themselves, they're thinking, how can an enterprise build a very secure information system? Not about an information system, we're not talking about a, a, an application. We're not talking about uh, a desktop application or something like that. So we're talking about a way of doing things, an information system. So uh, how can it be secure? So they ensure that they implement each of the steps according to the international authoritative standards. So, uh, yeah, I'll reshare the link after the class so that I don't, I don't struggle, I don't move to another. So, so some of the standards that are there, the organizations that are actually running are for example, some of the international organizations that are there is the ISO. Uh, I don't know why, but you'll tell me maybe one day why it is written ISO, but it is International Organization for Standardization and not IOS. Uh, so you try to find out why it is ISO and not IOS. Then there's the IEC, that is the International Electronic Commission. They usually work together, ISO stroke IEC, to work to create, for example, the, the most common standard is the 27001 uh, ISMS standard. Then we have some Chinese uh, standards because these standards also govern how who are we uh, deal with information security. That is China Information Security Standardization Technical Committee. And also we have the CCSA, that is the Cyber and International Security Technical Committee, TC8 of China Communication Standard Association. So it's, those are some of the organizations that make these standards. Uh, there, are, there are other standards organizations that I already told you about. For example, there is the ITU, International Telecommunications Union. I don't know whether you follow Twitter these days or, okay, most of the time, it's very important. Uh, I saw Kenya was, Kenya got something. I think Kenya was, became a member or okay, I think it, it won something, a re-election for another within the inter, International Telecommunications Union. I saw Communications Authority, uh, Communications Authority and also Ezra Chiloba post something of the same. You can follow it up. It's very good to be updated. So there's something that Kenya has become part of with regards to the International Telecommunications Union, like a member 
uh, are members, but are, I think member within representing the region. <laughs> okay, what I can say with regards to links, please, uh, okay, is it the right one? <laughs> uh, let me see whether it is the right one. It has uh, a WGHL. Yeah, it is the one. So whatever Elmas and also Ekunade has posted are correct. So give time to understand the, the, the concern. So please don't post links if, uh, if you're not being allowed, allowed to, <laughs> because you, and also as a person who is seeing the links, don't just click on anything. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I know they are helping, so it's not bad. So this somebody has just posted the reason why. Uh, because international organizations are conversational that different acronyms in different languages, uh, IOS in English and OIM in French, for organization international normalization. I don't know how we actually pronounce it in French. The founders decided to give it the short form ISO, which is derived from the Greek ISOs, meaning equal. Okay, yeah, that is the reason. So it means that the ISO doesn't really stand for anything, but it comes from the word ISO, meaning equal, which is from their website. Very good. Thanks so much, uh, Susan. Good. I mean, Sharon, that's a very good research. Good, good, good. I say you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Maybe for those are saying they can't hear me clearly. I hope I'm clear, uh, audible. Or oh, there's also the, the International Internet Engineering Task Force. So I would advise you please uh, check out what these organizations do. For example, ITU and also IETF. IETF is also a very good organization. I saw, we, I was actually at a certain conference the other day and we had somebody from these and they're saying there's a lot that they do. And also they support even students to be part of working groups uh, where they can also shape the future of standardized uh, protocols and all those. So you can just check what they do, they told them. Uh, so some of the common IS standards and specifications we have in China, we have the graded protection of information security, usually called GB. Uh, we have the ISO 27001, I'd already mentioned it. Let me just get my pointer so that you can comment up. Uh, sorry, maybe sometimes I, I change the tone uh, of my voice but you can tell me when I'm not audible. <clears throat> I'll try to maybe use a microphone, but I usually don't like having earphones, especially in a long class like this one. Yeah, so I have the pointer here with me now. So we have the ISO 27001. Then we have in US, we have the TCSEC that is trusted computer system evaluation criteria. And also in the European Union, we have the ITSEC, Information Technology Security Evaluation Criteria. So they might look so many, but what's important is to get to know what does each of them really talk about. This one is a global one. This one is for China. This one is for the US. Uh, it just, it, okay, it can be used anywhere, but it was developed in the US and it governs how systems are security, information security in the US, and there's also the EU. So uh, for, for ISMS, that is, when, the, when anytime you hear about ISMS, it's all about ISO 27001. And here we have the, what we call the PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act, or Action. So in the PDCA cycle. So anytime you're talking about ISMS, always remember we're talking about the plan, do, check, act cycle. That, so planning is about establishing the ISMS, doing is now you implement and operate that ISMS, and then check is monitor and review. And why, 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 why am I talking about ISMS with that uh, importance? For example, as a cybersecurity kind of uh, career, you can become an ISMS consultant. You can help organizations become ISO stroke IEC 27001, uh, depending on the year, certified. 
for example, you heard of, of different organizations, even maybe you, you see in your university and you see maybe they are saying we are ISO QMS uh, 9001 certified. So how can uh, you can even be for working for an organization and uh, you, you are, these people actually paid a lot of money for consultancy to help people set up this information security management system. And this is a career by itself. So it's very important to also get to know about the standards. You can, you can be part of an organization that is a consultancy uh, and be moving around when you get a, a gig and you work in helping an organization become uh, ISO certified or ISO IEC certified. Let me take this and I wonder why this person has repeated calling. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, so let's go on. Uh, so we have the ISO 27000. Remember that ISMS is here, it is this one here. Uh, family of standards. So I'll not really dwell on this too much. Uh, just remember that they are in, in this section Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 3, and Roman 4. So in terms of Roman 1, it's all about the requirements and also the supporting criteria. And within it, we have from 27000 uh, to 27005. Uh, from audit and certification guidelines, it's six, seven, and eight. Uh, then there are some very specific requirements for certain fields. For example, there are some certifications that dwell in finance. A bank might actually ensure that they follow it up and get to know some of the requirements that are there for information security in a financial setup, in a telecommunication setup, and also some other specific security domains. There's also then these special standards that border around health information security. You already know, you can imagine if you already know uh, how many MPs in this country have, for example, HIV AIDS, just as an example. Or maybe you get to know uh, how many leaders are currently dealing with STD issues or something like that, so just as an example. So uh, that is maybe through maybe an issue with uh, an information security uh, and health information management system. So that is a crazy area. So and also something such as research. We had a lot with regards to the research on COVID vaccines, the COVID-19 virus or something of that sort, supply chain, storage, security. Yeah, yeah. so that is that is thing. So, so that is that is that is that the family of standards. I'm trying to move a bit faster. So uh, you can see there's there in terms of the ISMS, it's there 27001, This is how it evolved over time. I'll not spend too much time on that. Uh, so you remember that it describes the requirements for an ISMS, an information security management system. Also, in, in companies and organizations, they have another thing called a quality management system to ensure that quality is at par. So that is what they usually say they are ISO certified. So they have the requirements for establishing. After that, it becomes ISO, you establish the ISMS. Uh, remember that it has some 35 control objectives, some uh, one that 113 controls. Uh, uh, there's a, our organization is setting up ISMS. So some of the controls are, for example, like password controls, some of that sort. Then we have the 14 categories. Uh, then after establishing, you realize that you have the operations taking place, 27002, provide the best practice rules to 27001, which is the requirement. So, the, the idea starts with 27001, then you can have the operations and also some of the best practices coming from 27002. So these are some of the control areas, uh, for example, in asset management, just to highlight some of the few, 
some are in operation security, how do you deal with supplier relationship? For example, a supplier is giving you, for example, we had a lot of issues in terms of uh, our elections. They are saying that this company, uh, there's the supplier, they know everything. They were putting their servers in the same server, in the same cloud or in the same premise as another competitor. So there are issues with regards to supplier relationships. There are issues with regards to compliance. There are issues with regards to cryptography. Another issue in terms of control area is human resource security. How do you secure uh, human resource? Do they, they sign a non-disclosure non -disclosure agreement? And of that thought. Yeah, you can see all those areas. And since you're going to get these, and I think I've already given you to download, you're going to check them later on. So always remember that in each and every implementation steps, it all borders around planning, doing, checking, and acting. So planning takes part in some of the first three stages. Uh, then you do some of the things uh, within stage three, I'm at the middle of stage three and four, you're doing the doing at the middle of stage four and at five, you're also checking and also you now do the acting. <clears throat> so there are some audits that are done. Uh, okay, this is how you start from startup until then. So when you're going to be working maybe for a consultancy, you'll be able to understand some of these processes up to the point when you have it. And it is a cycle. You don't just end it at here. After you finish it, it goes round and round. So you're going to see that I'll not focus on that because of time, but you'll still go and check it out. I'll not say that it really is a focus of the HCI security exam, but it's important to just know uh, some of the steps in terms of establishing an information security standard. Uh, so we have the graded protection of information security. Uh, I think this one was, if I look at it here, oh, graded protection, you can see it's a China standard. So, so you can see, you can get to know some of the contents within it, but since it really focuses a lot on the China, uh, on how China runs with regards to security, you can see how it works, how it, it ensures public communication works. So obviously they focus on it a bit in terms of the chapters, so I'll not focus so much on it. So it's still you're saying how some of the stages graded protection has gone through. It was an initial stage, started 1994, then it went to a development, then up until now it has gone to a promotion stage. So yeah, so I'll not focus on it too much. I said this should not take us too much time. So remember some of the, okay, this is the grid, grid of protection, still under graded protection. Again, as I said, it has some control points. You can see still similar. Under, under what, okay, running. So it is more referring or whatever is it doing. Uh, structure, security, structure security, access control, security audit, boundary integrity check, network device, protection, malicious code, uh, and network device. Anyway, uh, graded protection is still under it. Don't focus too much. You see me not focusing too much on something. Just know that you get to understand some of the things that are there. In the US, we have the TCSEC. It has four elements, very verified protection, mandatory protection, discretionary, and also minimal. So those are some of the with the levels. Uh, the, I, the one for Europe also has levels from E0 to E6. In terms of function, it has F1 to F10. You can still have a time and look at that. So we have another act called the Sabanese Oxley Act. You can check on it. Uh, I think somebody may think, what is the relation between SOX and information security? the SOX Act. So, uh, so some of the clauses regarding the SOX Act are, are for contract management. So this, uh, this is a key area just to look at. For monitoring of contract management, enterprise operation processes, 
and also apply the information system inspection. Good. I don't know whether we covered enough for this quiz or I, I rushed it a lot, but let's get to the quiz. Fingers crossed. So let me see whether you, you understood something here. So this first quiz is asking, which of the following are internationally known, internationally known information security standards organizations? Which are they? Which are the organizations? Uh -huh. I can see some are saying A, B, uh, some are saying uh -huh. So the answer is A and B, right? ITU and IETF. This is how others. Cindy? They were there, but they are not internationally known as information security standards organizations, but they work. I don't know if I can take you back to that slide, but you can check on it. Uh, it was some, I don't want to go back there because of time. So ISMS, so I hope you have understood that for those who are saying CND. Then let's go to the ISMS complies with the what process? I said it, I said it, I said it. That is why it is there in the quiz. It gets to know what, what each standard is. Yes, it is there, PDCA. And what is PDCA? Plan, do, check, act or action. Whichever you say is fine. Planning, doing, checking and acting. So that is, that is the whole process around it. And yeah, I think that will, We've covered that. We've covered the information security standards, some of the common of them, and you're done with that one. So I think we can move to something else. Let me try and see whether I can move a bit faster. Uh, I hope you, that was nice, I can see. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Everyone will actually be logging out at exactly six, all of us. So I respect your time so that tomorrow we also start at exactly that time. So let me just get to see. Uh, I also hope, oh uh, yeah, yeah, Dennis, let me send you some my contact. Uh, yeah, for and also is I've had you formed a WhatsApp group. Maybe <clears throat> you can you can add me there. The admin can tell me where it is, and we can we can chat up, and I can show you more opportunities. I have so many opportunities to share with you guys. Yeah, so where was I? I think I need to take you. Ah, good. Basic network concepts, network devices. These are things you've covered in your introductory course. So I'm sure I'm not going to spend too much. So the admin can, who is the admin? Anton, for the WhatsApp. I'll maybe can I can DM the person my number, then they can add me to the group. Please don't give me the link because I can't click it on my laptop. So uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. let's look at this. Yeah, these are WhatsApp, maybe. But again, remember that don't just join any. And also remember that Huawei doesn't run a WhatsApp group. That is for your own purposes. And you are not liable for anything that may happen when you are in that group. Yeah. So. Let's go on. So some basic network concepts, I believe, was this really covered in your in your introductory course? Maybe somebody can tell me uh, if this was covered in the course that you covered and that you completed so that we have it like a discussion, we have it better. So just what you are part of the admin or who is the admin? Is it Antonio or just what? Maybe the one who is the admin can okay can raise their hand. The one will raise their hand faster. <laughs> I know it is the one. You see, I have not seen that everyone will have scrolled. They will have raised their hand. Uh, who has raised their hand? Admin, uh, I know him. 
to endele. Oh, nice, Anthony. Oh, Anthony, you're the admin. I believe you are the admin. Let me let me believe you by faith. You know, cyber security classes are crazy. Uh, <laughs> oh, please don't share your numbers here. Please just use the link uh, so that you you go join in if you are having an issue, or maybe just DM the person so that we don't have the chat full. Yeah, yeah, BMG too don't have to go over this quickly, please. Yeah, I wouldn't really want us to spend a lot of time here. Yes, uh, let me just put the chat up here so that I check it. I don't miss it. Good, I think Tony I've shared with you. Uh, Samuel, it's okay, you can get the recording. I'll share the recording on the, on the WhatsApp group. Uh, huh. Let's, we are almost, we are almost up. I also have another physical meetup with someone later. Let's finish this. So uh, let's go over this quickly. And uh, if you're having any issue, please ask uh, at any point. Uh, and those who are asking, <clears throat> okay, there's somebody who was asking about my profiles. Uh, yeah, I'll share with, it, with them, with you, all of my profiles on LinkedIn and Twitter and everywhere. Uh, for those who have followed me, it's okay. You, you're already up there, Kevin, too. You can just check there. And you can see what we, can do it. We can. We can, can see. So we have this uh, typical campus network. And all about campus doesn't have to be a university campus, but this is what we call a campus network. So we usually have the internet out there, the wide area network. We have these routers. These are symbol for a router. The egress zone is where, like, we are getting out. If you are knowing the in, the in English, what egress means. Then you have a core layer uh, where we have the firewalls. These are firewalls. And then we have the core switches. And then we have <clears throat> some aggregation layer where maybe you can have some border switches or some main switches. Then we have the, sorry, uh, what have I done? This thing is referring on me. Anyway, access layer. Then you have the access layer where uh, the end point end user devices are actually accessing the network from. So that is how it actually really works. So when you're looking at that typical campus network, we have the OSI. OSI, OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection Model. Uh, it is made up of, I think, seven layers. Uh, what are the objectives of it? What are the design principles? What are the advantages? So let's look at the layers. So in terms of the layers, uh, we usually have this, and it's very important to know this because even as a cybersecurity expert, you need to know maybe an attack has happened at what layer. Uh, is it an application level attack? Uh, is it uh, is it uh, a network <clears throat> layer, or is it happening within uh, within the physical layer? <clears throat> Sorry. So we have the top three layers as well as the bottom bottom four layers. So when you look at it, when you look at all these, so you can see whatever is on this side is what we call the unit of data transfer or what we call, what, what are those information called on uh, at each layer. So in the physical layer, it's all about bit streams. Uh, it's really about the, something going on if it's our Ethernet on the copper wire, it's all about the bits. Uh, in the data link layer, it's all about media access and link management. They, they're usually called frames at this level. And the network, which is the most common, they're usually called packets. And here is the, there's a lot of addressing and routing. Then we have within the transport layer, we are usually called segments. Uh, usually used to establish some end-to-end -end connection. Uh, so here the data, the data unit, as I've said, is a segment. Uh, so the other part is also the session layer, which is responsible for maintaining, establishing, maintaining, and also managing some of this, all the sessions, not some of them. Uh, and here usually called the session protocol data unit. 
Uh, then we have the presentation layer, where it's all about the data formats and also how encryption of data happens. But remember that these days, it's not about security happening within the presentation layer. Information security should be applied as much as possible across also the layers. Also, the application layer, we have the application protocol uh, data unit. And that is where uh, that is where the, the PDU for these cases for the application layer and community. It's all about communication between the different applications, between a browser and the server application. All these happening here. So that's this OSI model. Uh, you must have already gone through it within with your lecture as if you're doing an IT course. Uh, so in, in terms of computer networking. Then we also have, you can see, you can see how it, they communicate. For example, within the physical, we have the frame uh, within two hosts. Each layer uses services provided by the lower layer to communicate with the peer layer. So for example, this layer, uh, this layer is using the services provided by the lower layer, right? The lower layer. For example, these are layer seven, using the services of layer six. These are layer six, using the services of layer five. Okay, so the, it is also it is also works with what you call the TCP/IP uh, protocol stack. So TCP/IP usually has some kind of a mapping with the OSI. For example, all the three top layers are usually aggregated into what is called an application layer in TCP/IP. Uh, transport layer has a one-to-one -one mapping. Network layer and uh, network layer is usually called the internet layer. And the data link and the physical are usually aggregated and mapped into what is called the network access layer. So that is how it is mapped. Just get to know the understanding. Uh, it is the TCP IP is usually used because of the openness and the usability of it. And uh, it is the one that is more widely used uh, and is implemented as some of the standard protocols. Think of it like HTTP. And all of that. So functions of each layer within the TCP IP. So you can see uh, they are almost similar. Physical media access, Ethernet. These are some of the standard, the protocols that are there. 802.3, TPP, HDLC, uh, FR. As we move on, remember that you're going to be also focusing on some one protocol called the Huawei redundancy protocol. Very important to check. It usually appears a number of times within your HCI security exam. So we also have the internet layer. Uh, within it, we have IP, IP, we have the ICMP, IGMP, uh, ARP. These are some of the routing protocols that are there. And so if you think RIP somewhere there, routing into internet network protocol, uh, not the other RIP that you know, <laughs> then TCP and UDP uh is within the transport layer uh tcp is a bit more cautious than udp udp doesn't really care usually just use that as the difference but you can check all about end-to-end -end connections uh, between the hosts then for the application layer this is what we really are usually interact with as the user so we understand http and the secure version of it https telnet usually helps even in terms of even our in terms of our interaction right now, maybe using Telnet in one or another, I shared with you a file. Uh, you used a bit of F, uh, FTP, and you also have a version of FTP called TFTP, and also domain name system, uh, also known as DNS. So those are some of the things that are there. Very important to, for this, it's just important to know what each layer does, all this, as well as these functions here. So how is data encapsulated and decapsulated? So it usually happens here, for example, within the, the this what you call encapsulation as you as you move down as the center, as the as the data is moving down the four layers, and then as it gets to the recipients, it is being de decapsulated. So you can see at first it's usually just up and user data. Then you have now TCP is added, appended up and user data. Then IP is appended 
uh, together to this. Then you have IP TCP app and the user data. Then you have now the Ethernet IP TCP app and the user data. Then as you move up, uh, it now becomes decapsulated up until you now just get the app and the user data at the recipient. If you have any questions, you can still ask on the chat as you try to finish. There's also the concept of the quantiple. Quantiple is five. That is usually have the source IP address, the destination IP address, the protocol that is going to be used, the source port as well as the destination port. As a cybersecurity expert, it's very important to understand this concept because it's by understanding the quantiple concept that you can make out uh, where data is coming from, how it, uh, where it is going to, and even you can even do things such as analysis of logs. So, uh, so that is the quantiple structure. So, uh, it is a concept, and the application server can respond. It's usually used so that the application server can respond uh, to service requests because it must register the port numbers as well as the protocol for the service it hosts. So by using the Quantiple, this application server can actually respond to some of the things such as concurrent service requests while ensuring that each link is unique in the system. So it usually helps for the Quantiple concepts is helps for concurrent service requests and also ensuring that the link is usually unique for each and every uh, request in the system. So that is the Quantiple concept. Uh, some of the network protocols that are there, we have the ARP. Uh, ICMP is usually used to test network connectivity. It's usually used for, 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 for pinging, you know, pinging and reset. For those who do, for those who are self-proclaimed or, or well uh, authorized white hat or black hat hackers, you already understand the importance of ICMP. Uh, there's also routing protocols that are usually used. For example, like most of the time, the issues that we are having with regards to security really stems within these protocols. So most people, most uh, hackers who are very good, they are not they are not really focused on the application level kind of hacks. They are usually focusing on what can they take advantage of within the protocols within the different like OSPF, uh, like uh, when you're looking at, and if you're not understanding this, you can just Google them out and see what it is. Uh, like for example, SNMP uh, for network device management, usually very important to see how it really works. And the other one is that usually is for MAC addresses. You have heard of MAC address spoofing. People can actually act as if they are you and they are not you in terms of the, at the MAC address level. Uh, media access control address, usually even deeper than the IP address because it rarely changes. So, yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for mine asking, answer, for Alice ask, answering mine. It is PDU stands for protocol data unit. So, so all these are protocols and they actually you can see where they actually apply OSPF is with, and RIP are usually within routing when you're removing from the internet and it is routing, uh, taking the exact place. Think of it like, best example is you want, you want to get from Nairobi to Mombasa uh, or maybe, yeah, Nairobi to Mombasa. There are, I think there are a number of routes. You can go the, di the kind of the direct server route. You can go to another route. You can go through, I think, Kilifi or something of that sort. So all that is determined for the shortest distance using some of these protocols. Uh, so there's an overview of ARP. Before sending a data packet, host C, A, uh, packet to host C, that is this host sending a data to host A. Host A needs uh, for host A to send a data to host C. Uh, it needs to obtain the MAC address. This is the MAC address. You can see it usually looks like this. Is the IP address in CIDR notation? Is a MAC address? Is a IP address? MAC address, IP address. So it is to obtain the the MAC address for OC. It does that. So once it does that, what happens? So you can be able to see that 
the ARP cache, you can see, uh, does not contain the MAC address for host C. What is the MAC address for host C? It is 04CC. So you can see it doesn't have it. Uh, supposed to send it because it sends it there, right? So you can see, OC sends an ARP request packet to obtain the destination MAC address. It's quite of a process, but it's important to understand how it works. If you have any challenges on accessing, on doing the ARP, kindly reach out to me and I'll try to make sure that we help each other to understand how ARP works. I'll also share a video if you want on how it actually really, an animated kind of a video. For, I'll, I'll, for, for the sake of time, you'll allow me to just move out of this, but it's all about getting the right identity so that you can send data. Uh, so the replay, the ARP replay comes, it knows the MAC address so that when it sends the ARP, you now have the MAC, the MAC address there and the destination. So, so the, we have a one called gratuitous ARP, which is usually used to help in detecting is an IP address conflict. So, yeah, please, Steven, if you want to ask, you can ask kindly. Uh, you want to ask audibly? Do you, do you want me to unmute you? Uh, okay, I can see you said uh, you, you added, you used your a different email that you used to register. Uh, maybe we can, if you are on the WhatsApp group, we can look at it after the class and see what we can do so that you can, you can use the right registration because I don't think there's a way you can integrate the two. And I think the only way Huawei can understand whether you're moving on well is using the email that you registered with for the bootcamp. Yeah, so uh, there's also pinging. Pinging is not too complicated. It's all about getting to know whether it works. You can use that ping question mark to get to know how it works. Uh, for those who have never done ping, that is how it would look like. Uh, you can get, and it's, uh, so somebody asking how many ARP messages are there? So when you're looking at this, uh, so what do, what do you mean when you talk about how many ARP messages? There's usually uh, an ARP request that goes from the host. That is one ARP kind of a message. Then host the host actually, where am I? The host actually re responds with another. So you can see this is the first. This is the first message. You can see this one here. Then we have <clears throat> the second, which is the reply. And now we have the crashes ARP, which is used to detect conflict. But again, remember that once the messages come, the, the ARP reply, now you can have the, the host, that is, I think, host A, host A can now have. So remember that ARP does not provide any security protection measure. And also remember that it cannot do any kind of authentication. So a number of things, things you remember that for security is that malicious users can exploit the weakness, this weakness of ARP uh, to do things such as MAC address spoofing. So remember that, that if the ARP replay comes back and it appears as if it is for host B, the message can go to host B yet it was meant to go to host C. So that is, that is how it is. So let me move a bit faster. I only have two minutes. So I think uh, it's very important to look at OSPF. Uh, so these are some of the routing protocols. So you can see protocols are usually the main components for uh, communication over the internet because that is how it comes, routers come in. And you remember that they are usually classified according to some of the things such as network segment routes, host routes. There are usually some direct routes, some indirect routes. We also have some unicast routes and multicast routes. Uh, this is also provided in the PDF. So if there's any challenges on that, I can also share on it. Then there's also OSPF. 
which is very good because there are no loops. Faster convergence gives some good scalability and also provides for supporting authentication. SNP is usually used to transmit management information between the network management system and managed devices. So usually very important. These days we have managed devices such as managed switches, managed routers. So SNMP works well in providing and transmission of the management information. How it works, it has an agent and also what we call uh, uh, an MIB. Uh, who knows what does MIB? So MIB is usually a virtual start database uh, for, the, for the managed device. So this is SNMP version one, uh, version two, version three, and all these versions are usually been coming up because of security. Mm. There are others I'll just not focus too much because of time. So when you talk about enterprise network operations and management, you'll be able to check some of the things that happen within an enterprise and a branch in terms of one, understand how the strains work because you're not focusing a lot on networks. So you can see, so we usually have what you call an e-site network traffic analyzer. So it's a software only solution, usually uses some of the NetFlow, NetStream and NetFlow protocols within it. I'm reading from here. And also it is a powerful tool for what you call enterprise and o and management. So it actually provides a convenient way to monitor and analyze networks. And I can see our time is also, yeah, management information based. Thank you, BMG. Uh, then Netstream is a Huawei patented technology and it is used to collect and distribute statistics about the network. Uh, I can see my time is really moving and uh, you can see, let me just borrow four minutes. I'm already one minute past your time. So let me just borrow four minutes from you. Uh, so where am I? So it's, there's a way that it works and it usually provides for network management, enterprise accounting, ISP billing report. You ever wondered how, how, how does Safaricom know how much bundles you've used? Some of the protocols usually provide management information for that. And some of them is like mainstream. So we have uh, the best, uh, some transport layer protocols. Some of them is like, the, they usually understand the three-way handshake. We have the sync, uh, sync, sync, the sync and the acknowledgement. And then they're usually called the three-way handshake. You can also check on it. There's a lot on the three-way handshake. There's also the four-way handshake. Uh, how does it really work? This is an animated video. Remind me if you want more details on it, I can share with your resources on them. And then I go to application layer protocols, which are very easy to understand because at the level of application layer, we interact with them every day. We have the FTP server, uh, we usually have for providing files, users FTP, web usually you use HTTPS, uh, mail server would use something like SMTP, uh, and you also have a DNS server for provision of mapping of IP addresses, domain names to IP addresses. So you can understand how a DNS works. For example, you usually have a cache server. Uh, we have a top level domain. I don't know whether there's an issue with this, but it's very easy to understand that even your own computer has a DNS cache so that anytime it doesn't have to go back to a server to understand what they that. So you can see, there's usually the first access, this is what usually happens. Uh, this is what usually happens. Then within the time it comes, the second time, it doesn't have to go through all this process. You can see, I don't know about this, I have to ask the experts, but now I remember it, very easy. FTP also works on user interface, uh, in terms of the process control, uh, there's usually this control connection. Once a control has been provided, think of it like SSH. Then we have the process of data transmission happening through to the file system. For example, you might be changing from, for example, the, the Linux file systems, there are the Windows file systems such as NTFS. So there's the server as well as the client. 
and even your computer can be a server because it, when it is serving, uh, providing the files, it is acting as a server. So this client server can be inter, can be used interchangeably depending on the, on, on the direction of transmission of files. So there's usually those transmission modes. Uh, for example, there's the active mode as well as the passive modes. So those are active mode is usually used by default. And usually the, the passive mode is where the client sets up both connections and can switch the mode through commands. So, so the, the, in the default, the client sets up the control connection, but the server sets up the data connection. Con, connection. But in passive, the client sets up both the control as well as the data connection. Yeah, so those are the modes. So you can see that is the passive mode. Uh, you can see the control connection has all been developed by the client as well as the data. Is there in the graphical? HTTPS, very important, uh, get to know. But remember, HTTPS is not the only show of security. So I don't think that every website that has HTTPS is not a phishing website, is not a malicious website. Anybody can set up. We have Let's Encrypt. Uh, you can use it so to set up a secure, uh, a secure in quotes site uh, that looks safe, but has an issue. So these are very basic. We have HTML for our web, for web pages. We have a URL. Uh, which stands for the whole uh, link, for example, HTTP, what, what, what. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, Dennis. Then <clears throat> HTTP is a stateless protocol uh, uses for request response method for, for communication. So there's a graphic showing. At first you say, hi, says, what can I do for you? I need certain file called this, 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 this. Can you get it? Do you have the key? Yes, this is the key. Some blabby weird things. Okay, yeah, that is the key. Here's the file you want. That is really how it works. And you can, if you're able to analyze logs, you'll be able to see how these, all these happen. So there's a request packet and there's a response packet. Good, SMTP is for email, pop, and IMAP. You can follow it up because my time is up. Wow. Uh, I, I really rushed, I know. But I hope we can be able to answer these questions before we leave. Uh, so what of the following is not in the TCP IP model? Remember it is four layers. It has four layers. So I said a number of layers were aggregated. So which one is not there? It is the session layer, right? So we have the data link. We have the transport. We have the application. Within TCP IP, we don't have the session. It is only the OSI. OK, let's go to question two because of time. Which of the following packets? Thank you for those who have answered. Good, I can see all of you. Daniel, Joseph, Yoking Style, Zakaria, Rogers, Sharon Ann, Mejambadi. Yeah, all of you. So which of the following packets is the first packet of the TCP three-way handshake? Thin, thin plus acknowledgement, acknowledgement. It even looks easy to understand. Yes, it is the SY, the same SYN, right? If you look at it, uh, don't know whether it is here. Yes, it is here. You can see it is the first packet. Then you get the scene plus up, the three way, then you get the technology. Good. I think we are done. I think we can just do the menti, then we can be done. It has started again. So tomorrow we'll, if possible, kindly make sure you log in on time so that we don't spend too much time uh, trying to, to get everyone on board. So let me get you the mentee so that you get the feedback. Okay, it is here. I can see why didn't did some of us receive emails for this meeting link yet we received the other emails and we have completed phase one. So that may be a technical issue from the Huawei side. Uh, yeah, same link, same link. We use the same link tomorrow, same link, same time. 
So, so sorry for that on behalf of Huawei for not getting the link. But if you don't have, is the link shared somewhere? Let me see whether I can give you the links here so that you don't miss it tomorrow. Anyone who has the link to the to the session, I think I can go to participants and then I can do the invite. Yes, there's the link. Thank you, Dorcas. So please keep that link somewhere. So you can tell me how you, the session was. So that is the link. I've also copied the invitation and given it to you there. Yeah, please also put it on the WhatsApp group so that people don't miss it. So you can use go to Menti and use that code 4453-43389 and just tell us how the session was. If there's something that you'd wish me to, to improve next time, uh, or maybe tomorrow, please tell it. It's anonymous. I can't know who it is. Uh, I really don't want to know who it is. But thank you so much. The information uh, you've been informed. Uh, it is good, great, awesome. Uh, remind me to also send you the YouTube. Uh, YouTube. I mean, yes. I, I think I'll upload it on YouTube so that it is easier. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to go faster. I really wish that the content was not a lot. Actually, I think we haven't finished module one, uh, but we will try our best. In module one, we, we have finished, we have we were left with two, two contents, common network, you can see, uh, it is here, common network devices and common information security threats, but I'll rush through them tomorrow, but at least it's very important. Okay, kinda informed, kinda. Maybe kinda, kinda means it might mean so many things, but I'll do my best. Ah, yeah, very rushed. I'm so sorry. But the good thing is, the good thing, you know, the good thing is what? There's the recording. And you know what? What you can do to a recording? You can do a recording go at 0.75x, or you can go make a recording go 0.5x. You can make it go as slow. And you'll hear me speaking as if I'm, 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 I'm singing to you a lullaby. So uh, yeah, I'll try to work on my voice. Has run. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I change the 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 tone. Maybe I usually sometimes maybe I'm louder or maybe lower. But I'll do my best. Uh, Yorking star the PDF. I shared the link. Maybe somebody can reshare the Google Drive link. It will be really helpful. Uh, when will you see it for the certification? That is for Huawei to answer. That is, I'm just instructing you. So uh, Huawei will answer you when you can answer, when you can do that. You joined today, is it an issue having it that I registered today? I don't think that's an issue. Don't think that is an issue. Interesting. So come with stories tomorrow. Uh, let's join in at around 2.45 so that we can we can have a nice session. I think I can allow people to unmute. I don't know have that ability. Yes. You can, I, I've allowed you to unmute. So maybe if once somebody wants to say something as you close. Oh yeah, in terms of taking attendance, very important, very important. Let me tell you how you're going, how you're going to take our attendance. Uh, in terms of taking attendance, let me just give you a, uh, a link to, to, to register your attendance for today. So yeah, you can add anything else on the menti uh, if you want to. So let me just do a blank. So I'm giving you the, the day one, the day one uh, attendance sheet. Please don't, don't try to fill it later. I'm going to disable it at the moment the session ends. Uh, so 
I, I think for those who dropped off a bit earlier, I'll make sure I, I put the attendance li link at the middle of the session. But for today, I think you can, I'll also allow you to share it in, the, in your WhatsApp group so that those who I'm sure joined it, Yeah, so here it is. Let me send it to you. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry, Daniel. And please, uh, let, me, let me tell you something. Uh, if you feel that there's something that I've rushed and you like me to answer at any point in time when I'm teaching, please, Please don't 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 uh, don't be afraid to interject me or to tell me. Can you just pause there? Can you just pause? Yeah, yeah. I wish it could automatically do that, but I'll check. I'll check on what if the the session would have been able. But kindly feel that for my purposes, so that I can be able to know how how, how many of you are able to do this. So kindly fill that form. Just your name and your email. Just that. Just that. Don't fill the form. Uh, oh, there's okay. An, oh, there's an uh, error. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Is the settings of this form? Ah, here it is. Ta -da -da. I'm about to change that. Responses. Yep, I think it's now good. Kindly check on it again. It's now good. Is it good now? Maybe for somebody can tell me on the you are you can talk now. Yes, yes, it's good. Ah, uh, good. Good, thanks, thanks, thanks. Sorry about that. So kindly fill it, just your name and your email for, for purposes of just knowing <clears throat> all of us. So tomorrow I'll be slower than today. Please don't take offense. Uh, it, you remember I started a bit slower. Simna kumbuka. Simna kumbuka too. So ile tu niliona nikienda na your pace. Tutabaki kwa slide moja. Yeah, so for those who are asking my LinkedIn and my Twitter, let me post it now. Let's follow each other. And also maybe you can you can just put me a DM and say, okay, I'm in your class of this so that I know it's you. Uh, so that's my LinkedIn. That's my Twitter is coming. I don't usually connect with people on any other platform. I currently over, have over 800 friend requests on Facebook that I've never accepted because there's nothing we can, we can share on Facebook. What will we share together on Facebook? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we have on my GitHub, GitHub is also the same. Although uh, I don't actively code, but I, I do a bit of it. So you can still find me there. Yeah, so I think that is that. Uh, you can also share them on the WhatsApp group if you want. Thank you for those. I can see 97 people have already registered their attendance. 99, go on, please make sure you, oh, the attendance. So, okay, so anybody who can reshare the attendance for me, please. Let me just do it again. Uh, somebody can reshare the attendance. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. That is why you are an awesome class. I've never missed a very good class like this one. I think almost everyone can stand and become the class coordinator. But I think you have now Anthony as your as your coordinator. Can you stop recording? So thank you for that. I don't know whether I was supposed to give you another thing on the mentee. 
but yeah. Uh, was there any slide or how would you rate the session? Am I supposed to go to this one? Okay. Maybe you can you can go to this one. I don't know whether it's going to work. So you can see what you can read. Whether it made sense, whether it was tough so that I can understand. But remember, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be with you in the, I hope I've been added to the WhatsApp group. Okay, maybe I don't, I'm, I, I'm supposed to accept the invitation if I got it. Uh, then I will go to go. Let me stop the recording so that it doesn't become too long. And we see each other on day two, for those who will be checking. I can see some of this store staff 1.5. I can see uh, five, I understood most of the ideas. Yes, it was a basic, it is an introduction, but always come with questions. And I would like us to make this session, these days sessions, don't just do it for the exam. The exam will come. The exam is very easy, you're going to pass. Don't worry about it. That's not, that's not a big issue. Uh, the issue is, can you be able to find your way through the cybersecurity? uh forest do you know the different career paths can you become a, a forensic analyst can you become a pen tester and it's not all about, all about hacking you don't you don't have to be a, a even a coder in to be in cyber security you can be even not able to see any code but you are the who is who in cyber security i believe you know the the different people who are very good in cyber security in this country <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, you can see there's a 1.7. I'll try to reduce it tomorrow to something like zero. For Lenny Kwa, who said the lesson was tough, Aki, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll try to make it as easy and use real life examples and use layman language. Thank you for those who enjoyed themselves and those who, yeah, for those who still have questions, Let's use the WhatsApp group. DM me on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, we connect. I can see the connections. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Orlando Roger. I've seen your LinkedIn DM. And yeah, you can connect, you can connect. Let's connect. So uh, I'll be sharing with you a number of opportunities apart from the boot camp. I'm sure not everyone is not going to go to the third phase where you're going to be doing labs and competing each other with each other, I think in Naivasha. Uh, yeah, but be sure that everyone is, uh, the moment you are in this class, you are already a winner. So you're a winner. And if you get that certificate, when I was passing it, I didn't know that I'll become a, a trainer. I'll be I'll be looked for to do this training. So, so be out, be, be, be yourself. I didn't get the link to the meeting. I feel like my name is not in attendance for phase two, and I might miss the certificate. Uh, kindly, uh, Michelle, you can follow it up with the cybersecurity bootcamp team that is who are we, uh, and they can follow it up with you. The moment you're here, I think if you did the, the next generation cybersecurity course and you finished, yeah, Anthony, it was tough. I know, I know the their protocols are usually quite good. But the good thing is there's a lot of resources. Oh, mine the PDF. Mtu kindly somebody, somebody, mtu arushe Google Drive link up. Yeah, if you completed phase one, no worries. Just if you there are a number of people who are even sending me emails saying they have not gotten the links. It's just that singers are kujibu emails at Katia class. Singers are kujibu. Uh, so, so you're not alone. There are a number of people who didn't receive the link. And also it is not in my part to send you links to the class. It is the work of Huawei. Thank you, Dorcas. Thank you, John. So maybe, uh, Michelle, you wanted to say, you have seen you raised your hand. You want to say something as we finish up? Sorry. For, oh, maybe the class was over. You are free to leave. If you, to three. So, uh-huh. What is the SPAS score for each quiz? <laughs> Peter, too. I think the quiz you can repeat as many times as possible on the platform. Yeah. Michelle, you wanted to say something? How many nani I'll come and raise hand? 
Yes, Anyone? I was talking about the the mm. link to the attendance. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, Ile also. So I think I've answered you, Cindy. Yes, yes. Thank you. Ah. Ah, good, good, good. Namkuje, and I would like you to get these roles. The roles in cybersecurity is coming more than the people who really want it. So, uh, please, please, please. We, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be doing some break, break, break sessions about the careers and the opportunities. Like currently, there is a cybersecurity scholarship by Isaka. Uh, go to the Isaka Kenya Twitter page or the Isaka Kenya. LinkedIn page. Uh, the Isaka Global is giving out, and remember this is not part of the Huawei class, so the class is over. Uh, so they are offering $500 worth of, what of what? What of, see, uh, you tuition fees? You only 50K. You see, a sort almost semester mzima. Uh, is a scholarship. It's not closed yet. You can apply. So every time after class in Isa, we can back you on a phone. To save, but in a year link. Okay, let me give you the link. So you get like 100 days of $500 academic scholarship and what, what, what. There's also an IS2. I don't know whether it, you know. So that is a link. I mean, Rabbi, which link would you want? So, so you can see that the, the, the deadline is that. So you can see it is you you'll be you should be enrolled be studying cybersecurity by the virtue of you doing this course you are studying cybersecurity. So so you can apply and see the application that is there. You can log in with Isaka. If you want to confirm that the, I'm not telling you something weird, you can just go to the Isaka Kenya chapter Twitter page and you'll see it there. So Isaka stands for Information Security Audit and Control Association. So here it is, you can see. And when you click on this link, Yeah, do you see it takes you to the same place? I think it's the same link. So it's there. So any question? Maybe, okay, I've seen, Olal, you want to say something before we close? Uh, Kevin. Yes, please. Okay, thank you for that session. That was a good sure. session. Um, now in terms of certification, sure. um, now when you go to any job website, LinkedIn or anything, and then mm -hmm. you search for when you look at the job descriptions mm -hmm. for yeah that's uh, certain companies uh, post job descriptions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. The certification that you will see are mostly, uh, for example, let's give an example like CEH, mm -hmm. uh, CISP, or something else. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of uh, when it comes to how Huawei, I've never. That is me. I have never seen mm -hmm. um company requesting mm -hmm. for certifications for Huawei. Mm -hmm. So my question is, even if we do mm -hmm. these certifications, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it only meant for Huawei? Okay. Uh you know what 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 i can answer for that is there are different vendor certifications we have vendor i mean we have cisco we have the most uh, the most prominent being ccna uh, we have uh, uh, we have aws we have microsoft we have google certifications 
So what happens is a company would actually request for a certification, maybe depending on the kind of uh, infrastructure that they have. For example, if a company is owning Cisco infrastructure, they would really want somebody with CCNA certified, right? Uh, you already know that Safaricom infrastructure mostly is Huawei, uh, Huawei infrastructure, right? And also you already know that in terms of in terms of Huawei infrastructure, also the there's also a number of uh, private ISPs. Think of like the fibers that are there and the difference in your So so you usually have those people. They in one way or another they encounter the Huawei. But again, it's not really about the vendor. It's really about the skill set because. Uh, the OSI model, whether it is Huawei certification or a CCNA certification or a CIA security certification will not change, right? The concept of the OSI or the TCP IP stack will always be the same. So the only difference is that maybe the interface for the command line for the Huawei router might not be the interface, the same interface of the command line for the Cisco router. This, these subtle differences or these small differences uh, that are there between the vendors. Same case for the cloud providers. Whatever is in uh, is in Microsoft Azure, the interface will looking be different from the GCP and also from the AWS. But an, an instance, a compute instance will always be a compute instance, regardless of the vendor. Uh, whether you're supposed to secure a security group might be called by different names, but it will always be a security group and the concept must be understood. The concept of the CIDR notation about subnetting, about, uh, about access control lists and all these security uh, implementations, they usually don't. So, so even when you're going out <clears throat> for, a, for, a, for a, maybe you're looking out for an, uh, for an interview, maybe they have actually requested for a CCNA and you have a HCIA security. It doesn't mean that it's, you, since you don't have a CCNA certification, but you're having a HCA security certification, uh, you're, not, you're not eligible for that job. You can apply and you can be able to show that apart the concepts that are there within a CCNA certification or a, maybe a Cisco security related certification is also a, what you have covered and you also have done a number of projects. What is a project? You can go through a network simulator. An example is Packet Tracer. An example is ENSP and just make sure you do those. You set up those infrastructure, you set up those routers, you try to see, uh, is there any conflict? Is there any security breach? All that, that is all that that is really important. So, uh, when you're applying, and also when you're going to the interview, when you're going to the interview, you also make sure you, you are all about work-based scenarios. Unanyesha venye unaza solve problems in a work-related scenario. So no, no, in a very work-related scenario. Usienda hapo useme ya tininajua the seven layers of the OSI model. Iyo ita kusaidia. Uwende huko uwanze kusema venye uh, ukikuwa na hii network, inafanya hivi. If there's a loop, this is how I would actually solve it. So no, no. And ndakuwa ninajua ishida iko kwa hii layer. Uh, it's maybe you the layer two switch the configuration in the call switch so, so maybe ports are disabled maybe there is an issue with the vlans so you will be able to see how you, you show how you can troubleshoot or you show how you can secure a network uh the different devices so practicals as as sharon is saying and also sharon kenyan sharon and they really sell you a lot me i've seen people without even a degree, without even a single certification. Wanachukuliwa, that's just after wamechukuliwa, wanalipiwa na yo kampuni kwa nyezo certification. It's not. I've already seen people who like, even in Safaricom themselves, people just they did their, their YouTube, when I think about YouTube learner, Sama, uh, they just did all their trade on maybe UI, UX on YouTube. Like, you know, kind of katangeza projects, wako mwamezi jaza, wako na portfolio. 
wakienda huko hata hakuna stress hakuna ati atunaogopa ati unaanza kusema ati unajua nilianzia certificate nikafanya diploma nikafanya degree a a hakuna kitu kama hiyo yes eh, yeah morin who are we as a simulation platform it's called dnsp i think i'm going to cover it somewhere on the day it's called dnsp in the year i ever installed it it's quite crazy to un, to install it but but to repeat it here. it's called is it, uh, is yeah. it free ama yeah it is free it is downloadable it is downloadable i'll share i'll make sure i share the link to it it is downloadable dnsp software it's called yeah. dnsp uh-huh. dnsp uh-huh. yeah yeah so it is there so i don't know whether it I is available it, publicly like packet free i think it will cool. I think it could be better mostly labs zinafanyika hapo eh si ndio yeah sure sure and also the, the i think there's also going to be some two or three labs that I'm going to run although there is a see there's another phase where you're going to be just doing labs and yes 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 yeah so when you ata pita huko ndo atafanya more watashindana yeah and you get prizes there so so yeah so that is yeah i hope I've answered lakini nimesahau na nini nilikuwa najibu Mm. I think it was Olal, right? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so was there any one other question? Aki msimniachilie tu sana niende tu. Mimi najua kuna mtu nimemweka kwa hotel fulani and for the last one or so one and a half hours. Uh any cyber security internship? Uh Aki okay, sawa, so, mimi nita watafutia opportunities. Mkini add kwa group I'll look for there are, there's a number of them. There are a number and uh, at there is also ISC2. I, I, I don't know if, maybe if you have time go check it out. ISC squared 1 million certified security. Ni kama kuna mnaweza take up the opportunity. Just go look at it, google it. Open it up. Uh, register you come about us uh, uh, jafika 1 million click on get started and answer uh, some few questions and then you can go on face uh, let me just copy this link maybe share with you so it, the certifications don't really really that the the importance is exposure exposure hey you copy exactly. it exactly um, exposure certificate ni ni akukopea tu age ya kupema kitu niko na knowledge yake but kenye na mata ni tengeneza hizo simulations ingia kwa simulator fanya kitu ikose kuwak bang your head on the table baka ushindwe nini inaendelea then you're going to be good uh, thank you joylene uh, you're welcome uh, Yeah, I think okay, I think to answer that question it depends on the cluster deployed in the company yes kelvin uh, kiare have deployed Huawei and do require so so yeah most companies depending on what they they set up you might require unde sio lazima uone pale kwa me post na unaweza pata unaweza chukuliwa then unaambiwa ebu fanya for example i know in cbk it's a requirement to have cisa uh, if you are in information security or information audit but you never see people say you must be cisa certified in information security auditor ama vitu kama hizo i think also in oeg office of the attorney general i mean auditor general i mean uh, so so those are some of the things they don't but unajua ukishakuwa nayo unakuwa na hapa hand wanaona ah huyu mtu atutatumia time kumfunza kuhusu sisa already yako nayo so yeah so i hope all of you have answered let me see how kila mtu alijaza attendance ama kila mtu i didn't stop recording I think I stopped.